Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So AI complexity is really starting to increase. When I'm talking about AI complexity, I'm talking about the whole AI ecosystem. So I caught this great thread on X where people were talking about using uh, clothes specifically and how it was hallucinating and they're having all kinds of problems and they're talking about how you have to structure the prompts. For example, the more structured structure rather that you, that you could give an AI, the more structure you can give it initially, the better your results are going to be. So with my own fitness AI, Brad Fit, the fitness AI, I gave it a lot of structure. So you have to spend a lot of time planning your mega prompt, if you will, to uh, give it constraints. The problem with the AIs is that they have these models that they just go out all over the place. Somebody posted a comment under one of my videos about how the size of the model will play a big role in terms of uh, its efficacy. Now, I don't know everything about AI. I'm not. I've just developed my own custom GPT, and I've used AI to accelerate some of the uh, some development in terms of, you know, I was talking about debugging, reading the log files, helping, helping me to navigate and find... Uh, INI files, config files within an application, a legacy application. Basically, it became a very, a very fast and uh, a faster, what's the word I'm looking for? A stack overflow, a faster Google, uh, faster search engine with uh, some minor logical capabilities. Point is, what I'm seeing now with AI, it's quickly becoming its own stack, if you will. So they're going to be da Java developers who know Java and Java developers who know Java and the AI landscape. You're going to have Python developers who know Python and those who know the Python in the context of the AI landscape. Those who adopt the new tech, the AI tech, who understand those workflows and the tool sets that are uh, developing around this space are going to do very, very well because there are definite productivity gains. But again, I'll emphasize this again because a lot of people are a little worried about the development jobs going away, yada, yada, yada. It's now, they're not. It's just, it's just changing. It's just changing. So just like in the 90s, uh, Delphi developers, uh, traditional VB6 developers, thick line developers, Windows only, those jobs faded over time as the web stack matured and became more mature. You had a lot of VB programmers losing their jobs, never to come back, when uh, all of a sudden you had a bunch of web app jobs, a bunch of C Sharp uh, .NET jobs, a bunch of Java jobs, a bunch, a bunch of JavaScript jobs, and so on and so forth. That's just the way it is. So I see the AI space, it's really getting much more complicated. I'm just saying using the AI, understanding how to use the AI intelligently. That's why I tell people in my mentoring group, links below, uh, you got to learn AI. That's why I developed, uh, I developed, I put together a mini course of sorts on AI development, how to use AI in your development workflows, how to look at AI, how to consider AI. Um, it's a fast moving target. Uh, it's imperfect. And because it's imperfect, it uh, allows for opportunity. This imperfection in the AI means that there's a huge opportunity for people who are willing to take that leap. So if I were a young noob, want to be developer today, I would leverage the web stack because that's the primary deployment platform for all web apps. I would leverage, so that means HTML5, CSS3, some JavaScript, then some backend could be JavaScript, could be Python, could be PHP. If you're freelancing, PHP for sure. And then I would also be leveraging AI along the way as you learn and in terms of using AI to speed up the whole process of learning and the whole process of development. You still have to know what you're doing when you use AI and as a developer, but on top of that, there's an additional skill set, an additional layer, which is AI. So, you know what? I feel a diagram is coming. All right, let's see what we can do here. 
We're going to now leverage my design skills, fabulous design skills. The 2026 Dev Stack. All right. Man, that was a lot of work. All right, so I put together this, um, this fantastic graphic. Can you see it? All right, here it is. I spent hours devising this. So at the very bottom, you have the foundations of development, and that's development foundations, dev fund, dev foundations. Yeah, it's just understanding programming languages, the web stack, the client server models, what mobile is versus web, et cetera, thick client. These are the fundamentals, quite a lot to learn. And then here you have the various implementations. So you have mobile development, iOS, Android. Then you have the web, which is dominant. And then you have uh, miscellaneous, like you know, small device driver development, game engine development. But these are the specific web. So now a new skill has come about. The AI skill set, so understanding the large language models, the LLMs, like, like Claude versus Gemini versus Grok versus GPT. You have to understand agents and the various tools that have come out for this AI layer, like MCP. Then, of course, universal communication skills. If you have communication skills, uh, well, you have to have communication skills. To sort of wrap it all up so you can talk to clients. This equals money, lots of money. Here is the 2026 dev stack. That's the title right up here. And it starts with the dev fundamentals. That's key. And you see that how it goes. So we have this new area here. If you have this level here of the hamburger of skills, you will uh, reach this. If you don't have this, you can still reach this, but it's going to be harder. This is where the opportunity lies. This does not replace this or this. It just supercharges these things. So there you go. Don't forget communication skills. Super important. That's why I have it in there. That's something that people don't emphasize enough. They don't emphasize how important communication skills are. Anyway, so there you go. That's it. That's the story. Um, I had this great thread on X. And I lost it where a guy was talking about uh, uh, having, he sent off, uh, I think it was Claude, yeah, it was Claude, to do a bunch of things and it couldn't do it. It was haywire and people are talking about how Claude will hallucinate and lie. I've seen that too, where I'm, I'm talking to the AI and it will, it will give me some erroneous wrong statements. It will say things that are blatantly false. And then I will say, hey, you know what? Uh, what you said here is false. And they go, oh, yeah, good catch. See? <laughs> and if you don't know what you're doing, I've been caught in the AI doom loop. The AI doom loop. Oh, my God. That's the worst. The AI doom loop, where you're walking through a problem with AI and you're asking questions, giving you answers, and then you're acting on those answers and it doesn't work. And then you go, hey, that didn't work. And you go, oh, let me, oh, you're right, you're right. I made this mistake. And it gives you an update. And then that doesn't work. And, it, and then it goes, oh, and you tell, hey, buddy, it doesn't work. And it does it again. And you, it said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I, I, miss, I missed this up. And it gives you something else. And it doesn't work. And it's like, it's like dealing with uh, some incompetent employee. That's the problem. The AIs will uh, they'll BS you. And I'm not attributing some ill intent. They have no intent. Uh, but it's weird how they will... Uh, it's, it's interesting. It gives you insight into psychology where you get this impression about the integrity of the response from AI by the way it seems, at least in our limited brains, it seems to respond in a very confident, authoritative way. So we wrongly assume that it's right. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So always high class with the McDonald's coffee. We're going to get the focus here. Get the focus. There we go. The big McDonald's. You know, McDonald's coffee, McDonald's coffee is actually not bad. I've tried Starbucks and different other coffee places. There's some, you know, fancy coffee places. This is fine. Mm. So there you go. That's the um, 2020, 2026 dev stack. That's you uh, now know what it is you need to know. 
And uh, I have it here so you can screenshot it. There you go. And um, you follow this. You're going to do well in the game. There's no question about it. I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people the ways of software development, getting jobs, starting businesses, uh, even getting in shape now because I'm old and decrepit, so I have to get in shape. Everything I teach, by the way, is based on personal experience. I'm an OG digital nomad nerd. Started writing all this code back in the 90s, early 90s. So... Yeah, I hear, I'm here to share my experience with you guys. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it. And if you disagree with anything I happen to say here, put it in the comments below. Maybe you can teach me something. All right. Cheers.